All right, we got a new segment. We'll call it the news segment. It's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six awesome sports books. Go check them all out over at tunicatravel.com. Show's also brought to you by winningcureseverything.com. That is our site. All of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, etc., is on there. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe for us. We got all your news, notes, information, gambling picks, blah, 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 all right here. Let's jump into this. There's a, there's a lot going on right now. We are recording this on Monday evening, November the 26th. So this is the information that we have currently. It will most certainly change throughout the week. But we'll have another yeah, some update of, next Some week. of the things we say often end up sounding ignorant. We're, we're going to make predictions and calls and comments. And yes. They're going to do things exactly opposite of what we think. And, and it is what it is. It's not going to live right. Let's, uh, let's go on and jump into some of these. We'll, uh, we'll talk Power 5 first, and then we will jump into uh, a couple of the smaller ones. Um, let's start off with North Carolina. Okay. They fired Larry <laughs> Fedora. Man. Not surprising. We were just talking about the fact that that guy is this on was, a different planet. Th- this was a guy that a couple of years ago I was just on the Larry Fedora train. I was driving that bus, and now I, I couldn't be farther from it. Well, and I, I brought up in the off season that I thought the CTE stuff might hurt him, but I think it's the CTE stuff combined with no. everything else. I, let's right? say he never had that fiasco. He still would have been fired. He is still just blown out of a cannon. Yeah. yeah I mean, that guy's – the. At the end of the North Carolina State game, when there's a fight on the field between North Carolina players and North Carolina State players. I love that the reporters know that he's going to get fired, and they just pull no punches. They're just like, no. we're, we're going at this guy. They, they asked him in the postgame press conference about the fight, and he said, what fight? There what was fight? no fight. There was no fight. And the guy said, well, what would you call it? And he said, uh, <laughs> they, they were celebrating, and we were celebrating. Said, well, what were you celebrating? <laughs> what were you? They had just scored a touchdown and were winning the game. What were you celebrating? Like, well, we weren't celebrating. <laughs> they, they were celebrating, but they were in our end zone. Like, that's okay. That's the end zone they scored in. So, of course, they're going to celebrate in that it's, end zone. It's frowned upon to run to the other end zone and celebrate. It just made no sense. Either way, that guy's like, is he delusional? I think he has... Like, what do we define this as? I think two straight nine lost seasons, like, he has... I think he's just kind of lost it a little bit, mentally. <laughs> like, I think he could still be a an effective offensive coordinator somewhere. I think as a head coach right now, like, he has tried all kind of different things, and he just doesn't know what to do. But he worked really well at... at Southern Miss. Southern Miss. And he worked really well at North Carolina early. Yeah. I mean, he got him to an ACC championship game yeah. and was one play away from from beating Clemson. So, like, oh, it, yeah, I forgot about that. that you was, know, that so it, they they really, but they, I mean, it, it their roster has been mass chaos. They've had suspensions. They've had oh, all kind of different all stuff going on. Going on North Carolina. Um, but it looks like they are hiring Mac Brown. Oh my gosh! Just a one man's opinion. <laughs> Seems to be a really nice guy. I think this is a disaster. Well, it, it looked like Mac Brown was done with coaching two years before he resigned at Texas, and he resigned five years ago. Like, they have already been through one coach at Texas, and now they are two years into another coach at Texas. And now you're going to bring Mac Brown, who is a 68-year-old man, and who who coached at North Carolina before, but left you high and dry. That was a long time ago. The that game was the late has 90s. changed so much. But but holy crap, was that the nineties? It was ninety eight. Yeah. So we're going on eighteen, nineteen years. I mean, we're two decades. Yeah. No, Mac Mac Brown shouldn't be the head coach anywhere. No, I I this, do agree with this. That. Is going to be a disaster. Like, there's a difference between Kansas hiring Les Miles, and we'll get to that in a second, but. There's a difference between Les Miles and Mac Brown. Now, if oh oh please yeah, if anybody wants to put those two in the same breath, we're like like we'll fight. Like, like they they you, you they might both, whip my butt, uh, but you're gonna have to whip my butt for that. I'll say this: uh, they they've both won a national championship, and they were only two years apart. Yeah, yep. But but Les had success much more recently than Mac did. Mac now, uh, Mac basically. Drove Texas into the ground. There are yes, which is hard to do. There, there are. I know that's what's so crazy. 
there are some offensive minded guys out there that if they get these OC jobs and they hire some young geniuses, then then maybe it can work because well, the would, other guys are great. I mean, the guys wonder, we're talking about. I wonder if this Mac Brown thing is like, okay, we're going to bring you in to steady the ship and, you know, be the politician, be the face of the program, but we're only going to pay you this much and you got to go get this OC well, well, and he's going to be the next yeah, in line. But I'm about to say that. Let's, so the next the next coach that got fired, which actually kind of shocks me, is, is Kingsbury. Yeah, that's actually Tech. the next one on here. So, yeah. like, Texas Tech fired Cliff Kingsbury. So, so with that being said, like, if, if you told me North Carolina hired Kingsbury to be the OC, and then, like, next year, it was like, all right, Mac, thanks. Cliff is going to be the guy now. Well, not maybe not in, with one year, but, like, two okay. or three years. Yeah, because I think that That would give Kingsbury offensive. time yeah, to kind of rehab a little bit. I think he could – I don't know that he needs a rehab. I don't I, mean, I don't know that he does either. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. I'm just throwing something against the wall to see if it'll stick. we I really do hope Kingsbury ends up with less. Because the less hire at Kansas That's not who I want with less. The first the first thing I saw when I saw that hire being a less fan is less is getting paid less than three million dollars a year. And when I saw that, the thing that I knew is going to happen, mark my word. I'm gonna say a lot of things that might be wrong. They're going to spend $2 million on OC. Les is going to go out. The reason he is making less than $3 million is because they are going to spend some jack on coordinators. Who do you who fits at Texas Tech? I'll give you my idea if, if you want that first. I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to who fits there. Kirby Hocutt, the athletic director, he played at Kansas State. And one of his best friends was Jim Levitt. Okay. Now, Jim Levitt wanted and, and still wants the Kansas State job. Yeah. But it appears that that's, not, that's not going to happen. So, if that's not going to happen, go back into the Big 12. That's right. You yep. know, you, you went with the offensive-minded guys for a while. It it has not worked to your, you know, to what you want. You bring in a defensive guy that has had a ton of success in the Big 12, Pac-12, 12, yeah, you know, whatever, everywhere he's been, he's been really successful. Think that might fit. I okay. think that might be good. Wouldn't shock me. Um, now, it's not one of these young, offensive, up-and-coming no. guys, but if, I mean, they've done that multiple times. You bring in an OC like Graham Harrell, who used to play quarterback at Texas Tech, but I don't think he's ready for a head coaching job, um, at least on that level. Maybe. You know, I could see that working. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, there's no telling what Texas Tech's going to do. Like, it, it, there's no telling. Uh, Kansas hired Les Miles. They fired David Beatty, hired Miles. This is where I want Kendall Bryles. Oh, no, no, that wouldn't that wouldn't hurt my feelings, David. I, I, want, a, I want one of these young, super good-looking OCs that just blow up the state of Texas with points. And I think that's what Kendall Bryles could do. Like, so, I, I think it, if he does not get the – so he is interviewing for the Texas State job. That's one of the things that I've got listed down here. Um, I was a little surprised that anybody would look at having anybody with the last name Bryles as a head coach right now, especially in good. the state of Texas yeah. where Baylor is. Um, and not because, like, I think it's been proven that Art Bryles yeah. didn't do anything technically legally Kendall wrong. Kendall definitely did. Like, the, like, Kendall was not involved in that. No. No, but you can't, Kendall even Bryles is Art, offense. Even if Art was involved, like you can't punish the son, the son, yeah, the for son the, for the same the, thing yeah, for the crime of the dad. Like that's just so not okay. It, guilt by association is not yeah, okay. No. Um, but Kendall Bryles is a hell of an offensive coordinator. But now, okay, I'm glad you brought that up. There's no question that if he's the OC, the OC, whoever it is at Kansas, will make more than the head coach at Texas State. Is it more important to be at a Power 5 school as an OC making substantially, not a little bit, substantially more money, maybe double more money, or to be your own head coach, but you're at this tiny-ass school in the middle of nowhere? Well, maybe not the middle of nowhere. Texas is a big place. Texas State, nobody really cares about. I think if Kansas brings in Browns, they are telling him, hey, you stick around with less. Oh, yeah, or, you, you got a chance to beat. Yeah, or you can get it. You can parlay that to a head coaching job at a Power 5 school. So long as you are successful. That's right. That's right. You win it. 
you you are a part of winning at Kansas, and you can get a no, uh, not an OC, a head coaching job anywhere in the country. Yeah, if if you turn around That's Kansas, right. you could get the Kansas job, That's which right. could end up paying you quite a bit. Or, or you could take any other job that's going to come open every year. Or do you think that Kansas is just a dead end, and it doesn't matter if you're with Les Miles or not? And but I still think Texas. I think I think, I think Texas also, State is a dead end. Yeah, I was about to say that. What he can do offensively in that conference, where nobody's going to man up and play defense against you. I mean, Kansas this year, they they hung with some guys. Hell, they hung with Texas last week. Yeah, and the bad football team. You don't think Kendall could have made that team two touchdowns better? I mean, two touchdowns better against Texas. They got a chance to win that game. I mean, two touchdowns would have beaten Texas. Well, yeah, it would have, it would no, have, it would have Texas... won. The, I mean, I know the game changes if they score two touchdowns yeah. and whatever. But I'm just saying, like, like that's just a drastically different team. And that's with the same talent they got right now. Yeah. I mean, this is a team that, that ran for 350 yards on Oklahoma. That, but that's what like, I want. Now, being a fan of Les and being somebody who, who has loved him his entire career, I I want I want him to end up with, with Kingsbury or Brawls. Like, that's what I need him to do because I think that's what it's going to take to win at Kansas. But when he took less than $3 million a year, that my, is, first, my first thought was flags. is that guy's about to pay some jack to an OC. Yeah. Um, Louisville fired Bobby Petrino, and now it looks like they're not going to get Jeff Brom. See, I was curious if they were going to get him anyway. Purdue has a lot more money than Louisville right now. Louisville is shelling out money to coaches, to legal fees, to to all types of organizations. Now, now it, everybody understands that part <coughs> of it. The other side of it was, does Brom just want to go home? Or is the smarter play to stay at Purdue, get that thing turned around, keep winning big time ball games, and then do you get a shot at Ohio State oh, if that's Urban what leaves, I was just about to say. or you know any of these other gigantic jobs? Lincoln that Riley leaves for the, the NFL. NFL gig. Yeah, I mean, like it does. That's right. No, do you, you want do you one get, of those big? You jobs? get a big job, big big job. Do you think it's – is it easier to get there from Purdue as opposed to – Well, you're not rebuilding. He's already spent a year rebuilding at Purdue, and he's kind of getting that thing going the way he is. He goes to Louisville. He's now doing the same thing he's done for the last two years at Purdue. Well, and in the Big Ten West, like, it is not far-fetched to think that they could make it to a Big, a Big Ten, Ten championship, championship game. game. That's right. So – And if at, you play Ohio State, well, you beat, you beat the hell out of them once. Yeah. Um – but if you're at Louisville, like, I mean, you got to go through Clemson, Florida a long State, way, a, like long, a long way from home. And not that Florida State is good this year, but like it traditionally, yeah. that's a pretty good football team. So, uh, so Louisville, like, they're they're in a tough spot here. I'm not sure who would fit there. I think Neil Brown at Troy fits them perfectly. Um, I I like, but you know that. Like, I like Neil Brown a lot. I think he's a pretty big offensive mind. So, so these are these are two. But games. he can he can win. Any way you need him to, with defense, these with are, ball control, these are with two names up tempo, whatever that got floated out that I read, in, in some article it wasn't like just a Facebook article. It was it was like Saturday Down South or somebody reputable who actually covers college football sent it out. If it wasn't Saturday Down South, sorry, I threw your name out there. <laughs> Apologize, but like it was somebody like that, okay? And it floated out two names. One name was. Um, Barry Odom, which is in the other weird to me. And, and the other name was Joe Moorhead. And what it was was the two SEC football coaches that make less than three million dollars a year in Louisville thinks well, we'll just we'll just pay them. We'll pay them, and we get them out of the SEC. Well, Louisville's got to be a better place to coach than the SEC, and I don't know that they're wrong. And so Moorhead, who has no connections to the South whatsoever. If Louisville offered him four million dollars, would he leave? I mean, I he's think, not I married think, to uh, now. After one year, would be hard. Well, no, I but think he's that. Not, uh, he's but he, he's also got to rebuild because they are losing a ton of seniors. I would say Mississippi State's going. What he's going to have to do at Louisville, he's going to have to do at Mississippi State. Now, I do wonder if State would would pony up That's and right. offer a bunch of money because. They are so fired up about the Egg Bowl win. Did you see enough of him this year to where it'd be worth getting in a bitty match? Or do you say, well, we'll go grab Neil Brown, who I think they should have grabbed last year 
by the way, and who I think is a better core coach than, than Moorhead. Than Moorhead. That is my opinion. One I, opinion. I, no. He's not hired to hire I would coaches. do that. If I was but state, I would not get into bitty more. I'd say, you want him? Take him. Go right ahead. Neil, All right, Neil, come, come on. Or Bill. Come nobody, yeah, Bill wants, nobody wants the defensive guys, which I think is foolish because I think Bill Clark is an incredible head coach. Well, state won this year because of defense. That's right. If like, Bill that's Clark what, was that's coaching what that team me. over Joe Moorhead, there is no doubt in my mind that LSU game is – Whoa, different the Kentucky game. Whoa, different. Like I, I think that is a completely different game. With maybe I am wrong, but they got four guys that are going to play on Sundays on that front four, and I think a guy like Bill could have gotten something out of him, and he'd have figured the offense out as well. Because he's a smart guy, and well, he'd hire yeah. a coordinator to do that too. Exactly, and and with Joe Moorhead with that offense, uh, I mean he was trying to fit a square peg in a round That's hole. Right. He was trying to run. His system instead of deal with the players he's got, and and towards the end of the year he figured it out. Yeah, but, but you, you've already lost. But a at couple that point, of important. Yeah. You, you'd already you lost four games. You like, can't lose to to Kentucky and do that. And I know Kentucky's really good. Yeah, and but you you can lose to Kentucky. You can't get beat twenty eight to seven. You can't lose to LSU because you threw four interceptions. Four interceptions. That's it. Like you can't score you can't keep nothing. Keep trying to throw the football. Like three weeks straight, they they scored less than seven or less than ten points. Yeah, I mean, I mean they, you they do that. scored seven against uh, Florida. They seven scored against seven against Kentucky, Kentucky and six against just, LSU. Yeah. Um, they beat Auburn twenty three to nine. Um, That's right. And then they scored zero against Alabama. Yeah. Uh, which is what it is. But yeah, like but the, and, and against LSU, like scoring six. Okay, like I know, can kind of see. But I, I, Bill Clark's defense would have controlled LSU a lot better. We're not a great offensive team. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, off Louisville, Colorado fired Mike McIntyre. I have no clue what they do. I know the popular name out there, but I don't want him to go to Colorado. Dana Holgerson is is the popular name. I know. He's I been like, at West Virginia for seven years. He's so fun. He's losing Will Greer. I don't know. He's losing that, that whole receiving core. He's losing that star left tackle. Yeah, but he's lost guys before. And, and I understand again. that, but, but once you've been somewhere more than about five years, if you come back and have a, a 500 season, it gets a little hairy. Well, he's not going to have a 500 season this year. So you're not assuming this. that next year he's going to have a 500 season. I, that's, I'm saying if he has a, a 500 season, well, it could get a little weird. Year. You don't think these jobs will all be open next year? You don't think people are going to be hiring next year? I think they will be, but I don't know, that any, would, I don't know that any would fit. Oh, you don't? Because I think Ole Miss will open up next year, and I'd, I'd take Dana Holgerson at, in Oxford right now. I don't think that Ole right Miss. Now. I don't think Ole Miss would feel like he fits. God, Gary, this oh, that's so stupid. That's I'm, so I'm just saying, like I, you so understand dumb. the the kind of people I that disagree, are in Oxford. But I disagree completely. I did. We just disagree. I'd love, if there's any Ole Miss fans watching this, leave some comments. Tell us whether totally. or not Dana Holgerson fits. Yes, he fits because he's a good coach. He can win, and they want to win with the offense, and he does that. I mean, you're right about that. How would you like? You don't want him going to Colorado. I don't want to go to Colorado because I think. Col Man, this is going to sound. Colorado's irrelevant. They're not fun in college football right now. But they, but they could be. And he's farther away from me. The farther away you get from me, I just feel like you just. I is Boulder you. further than Morgantown? I don't know, but I, I kind of, I go to Ohio a lot because of family stuff. Like, oh, so I'm, that's I'm, not far. I'm, I'm around the West Virginia Wheeling area all the time. Like, okay, come on, okay. man. Well, not all the time. At least once or twice a year. All right, that uh, seems close enough. It's close enough. All right, it seems right. close enough. Well, and and they're in the right time zone. And they play in the Pac twelve in the Big Twelve, so that's close. Yeah, I mean, they're they're in the right time like, zone. A, so a, like that's right. Their games time. start at the right time. Normal I don't time. have to stay up until midnight to watch them. I I I'm a Dama Holgers fan. I do think he would fit at Colorado. He wouldn't be able to wear his visor, so you wouldn't be able to see the uh, the glory. Why not? Sure, you can. Man, it's cold and colder. You don't. Oh no. I see, understand so it gets you, cold in nope, West Virginia. Yep. I guess see, this that. is a man that's never been to West Virginia. I understand that it's cold in West Virginia. I, it's colder in Boulder. No, it's not. That's just. Not somebody true. in the comments tell me I'm wrong. That's just not true. It, tell, it the, might be. It might be colder, but it ain't a wet cold. And we live in the South. Wet cold sucks. Yeah, wet cold definitely does suck. I'll give you that. All right. Uh, Western Kentucky fired Mike Sanford. They hired Tennessee offensive coordinator Tyson Helton. I thought this was a weird hire, but it, it, I, I get the connection. Yeah. Now, that, once you actually look at the yeah. connection, Tyson Helton was the offensive coordinator under Jeff Brom at Western Kentucky. Right. They went outside the box 
with Mike Sanford, who was the Notre Dame offensive coordinator. That did not work. He wanted to completely rebuild what they had built there. Went 9-16 and 16 in two seasons. This is one of those where Notre Dame hit a home run letting a guy go. Yeah. I mean, that that's just that's yeah, Chip, just true. Chip Long is, is a way better coordinator way under better. Kelly than Sanford was. Way I think better. Sanford, like Sanford oh, is going to get, he's oh, gonna get offense fine. coordinator jobs. No, he'll, and he'll be good. Yeah. But he's, he's not. He's not long good. Tyson Helton will be – he will fit there because he understands what they do at, at Western Kentucky. And he already fits in with, uh, with the culture they've built. So, uh, I brought up Texas State interviewing Kendall Browles. If Browles doesn't get that job, I don't know what or we, where they really go. And we really don't care who gets it. Yeah, them. nobody cares. Uh, that's not a job. That all right, here's three that are keeping their coaches that I was surprised by. Okay. Illinois. Yeah. Keeping Lovey Smith. <laughs> Now you mentioned something to me earlier. I I I, I heard this uh, on, from a different from a different podcast. I'm not going to credit. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to credit them because I don't know if it's right. This can't be right. <laughs> this 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 cannot be true. Okay, it can't it cannot be true that Lovey Smith still lives in Chicago. Not like in the like during the season. Like it's like a two and a half hour drive from Champaign. Like there's there's no possible way that the head coach of a of a college football team where these guys power five team. where these guys work a hundred hours a week lives and he, and he lives in Chicago two and a half hours away like that means he's not at the office two three days a week that it, that doesn't make any like sense that can't to me. that cannot that's exactly what I thought would happen when Herm took the Arizona job I was wrong on that by the way very 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 wrong love Herm Edwards sorry I ever doubted him <laughs> if Lovey is doing this and they did not fire him. I don't know what you have to do to get well, fired. Not, not only did they, they not fire him and they're keeping him, they extended him two more years. I don't know what you have now, to do to get fired. Now, I will say this. like I, I, I somewhat understand because Illinois, statistically, wins-wise, everything else, they did improve this year. They were 2-10 and 10 last year. They were 4-8 and eight this year. They, they were doubled. in some ball they, games. They doubled their wins. They doubled their wins, and they went from like 2.6 yards per play to 4.08 they like their defense was better. They were in some games. They got blown out by a few teams like okay. Iowa. Like I, beat I the like breaks off I of like Lubby. This man took a Rex Grossman quarterback team to a Super Bowl. Look, that's a big deal to me. A guy that has oh, grown yeah. up worshiping the NFL. Rex Grossman as your quarterback is a lot like LeBron winning the championship with with J.R. Smith. Like that that's an anchor. Like that's like extra. Like here. I'm gonna put this big boulder on my back and still beat you. Yeah, it's it's pretty. That's, that's pretty impressive. Um, I think it's the beard. <laughs> it's glorious. I've he, never he's uh, a he's beard. he's like a black Santa Claus. I it's like Lubby. Awesome. I just think yeah, Lubby Smith is great. Lovey I think Smith that is, is. I thought he was surely gone. Um, but nope, he's there at least two more seasons. So. And yeah, he just got he got an extension. He didn't just say no, we're not gonna fire you. Uh, USC is keeping Clay Helton. Lynn Swan sent out an email said that we are keeping him. And the reason behind this is the program's past instability and you can't get to where you want to go if you're changing coaches every two, three years. And I get that side of it. But if you got the wrong guy, it doesn't matter how long you keep him. Now, I am curious if they were to do the Kendall Browse or the Kingsbury move for OC. Like, well, and they, I, and then they DC. I think I'm okay. Oh yeah, and then go find. I mean, they, they they need a whole lot of stuff. Well, they need a coaching staff other than the head guy, maybe. It's it's bad. They've got players. Well, yeah, they're, they've, they're they've always got players. You can walk outside and say, "I'll take you, you, and you," and maybe you, if this guy doesn't work out, you just sit right there and wait on me. And and you can staff a team full of four stars. Yeah, I mean they they are the most talented team in the Pac-12, and it's not even close. And five and seven this year, and I thought for sure at five and seven he was done. Uh, it is really strange to me that the two best coaches in the Pac-12 are both in Washington. Yeah, it's, like the one state that you no know, knock to Washington is not like the football mecca of the state of like the conference. Well, and and isn't really surrounded with a lot of talent. No, no, like they're you not know? pulling high school talent that's local. No, they they're having to go to California. Yeah, like that's and and, and we know else. Peterson can do it because Le- Leach was pulling talent from every part of the country. Like he yeah. came to Brandon, Mississippi to grab a guy. Yeah, 
Like, that guy's like, I'll go anywhere. Rutgers, this is the last one. Rutgers is keeping Chris Ash. Went 1-11. I think they just know they're not going to. They're just taking the money. This is just a money grab. We're in the Big Ten, and we are just taking the cash. And it, and it doesn't matter right now nope. if we swap coaches nope. or anything. We get the same amount of money. I wondered if, like, the if, teams if get. they put up a fight against Penn State, and they put up a fight against Northwestern, and they put up a fight against Michigan State, and they lost all those games, but they put up a fight. And they still went one and eleven. I, I I would venture to say their coach makes less than two million dollars a year. I could be wrong. I'm literally guessing that right now. And I think they're just saying all you other teams have hundred million dollar, multi hundred million dollar facilities and monster mega contracts, and I make the same amount of money as you, and we pay for nothing. You know what I'm surprised it's about? Just a like cash it, grab. Did you know that Chris Ash had his pick? Of either the Syracuse job or Rutgers, and he picked Rutgers. Oh, Syracuse, lucky ducks, <laughs> man! All right. Sometimes, sometimes the girl you want ain't the girl you get. That's, and that's a and, good thing. and she ain't the girl you need either. That's right. Yeah, you're right about that. All right, that's going to wrap up our coaches rundown. <sighs> I wonder how much of this we'll have completely wrong in a week. Probably a lot, <laughs> but we're going to do it again next. We got Monday, the list so we'll... and the Mac one right. Yep. So we, well, actually, it'll be next Sunday when we talk about this. So yeah, probably we'll see what happens. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna wrap up the uh, the coaches rundown.